All right, yo, what's going on, guys? It's Wolves, and today I'm bringing you guys another episode of Tips and Tricks. So this is gonna be episode number four. Uh, but anyway, so let's get right into it. All right, so for tip number one, I'm gonna be showing you guys a really useful tip uh, for changing colors, especially in headers like this. There's a lot of random colors going on. Sometimes you need to adjust just one color, and it's kind of a pain to just draw it in. So I'm gonna show you guys a technique that I use a ton. You can also make some cool effects with this. Uh, but pretty much, you just come up here to Image, Adjustments, and Replace Color. So if you click on like a certain color, so let's just say we want to get rid of uh, this kind of pink right here. And so it will select the pink, you, you get a little dropper tool. So once you select the pink, you'll see something right here called Fuzziness, and this is just the threshold. Uh, you guys will see what that does in a second here. But if we come down here and we change the hue, you can see it changes the color for all of the it, it pretty much takes the color that you selected and will change all of those colors uh, to the new color that you choose. Uh, I probably just explained that in the worst way possible, but um, so then back up here to the fuzziness, when you if you bring it down, it kind of uh, it keeps the colors that it will select to a minimum range, but the higher you drag it up, the more colors it will select closer to the color that you selected. So again, you can just bring down like things like the lightness, uh, the hue, Pretty much, you can just mess around with it. You can make some cool effects. Um, you know, if you select something like that and you just make it white, you know, there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to the next tip. All right, so for the next tip, we're gonna come down here uh, to our filters tab, which is all the way down here. We're gonna hold and select color lookup. Now, this is actually something called a, I think it's a LUT or an LUT. Not really sure what it stands for or how you pronounce it. Uh, but if you, as you can see here, it's like preset color corrections, uh, but it kind of goes back into the replace color. It'll, some of them will, oh, like take out colors and replace colors. So if we come here to the two strip, it's everything uh, except for, or it only shows your reds and your blues. Um, if you come here to like a three strip, it kind of shows more colors. So you can see here, it kind of just brightens everything up. Uh, my favorite one is right here, which is the drop blues. Uh, you, it doesn't really show justice in this one, but as you can see, it already looks a lot cooler. Then you can obviously just add like a curves over it. And I, you can just mess around with this. There's a ton of really cool presets in it, um, as well as here with the abstracts. I, I haven't actually messed around with these yet, uh, but I'm assuming you can find some cool ones here. Same thing with, I think you can also add custom ones. Uh, yeah. But there's a lot of cool things you can do with this, so hopefully that's something that you guys didn't know about. All right, so for the last tip, I'm gonna show you guys how to high pass correctly. Um, I see a lot of people that high pass way too high. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do it correctly. Um, I know this is kind of a pretty universal method that everyone knows about, but I decided just kind of get to go over it because it is a cool effect if you do it right. So pretty much we come here to filter, Go to other high pass. Uh, if you select, you kind of want to do anything from three to five. Anything past five is just excessive. Uh, for this one, though, it's definitely a header that needs to pop, so we'll do five. Um, and the best way to high pass, if if we just set it to overlay here, it's going to look really sharp, and we we don't want that because it just makes really weird outlines. So you want to come down here to blur, do Gaussian blur, and set it to two. And it kind of it sharpens everything, but it doesn't. It's not the craziness of regular high pass but it still sharpens everything uh, and obviously you want to lower that to down to like 50 so it still pop makes everything pop but it's not excessive and then once you've high passed um, another really cool filter to use is the smart filter or the smart sharpen um, or yeah smart sharpen and these are the settings I have and it pretty much just it, it adds a sharpen to it that's not crazy or excessive um, I'm sure there are other ways to sharpen, but this is just personally what I do. Um, so yeah, so hopefully you guys learned something in this video. Uh, anyway guys, thanks for watching. Peace.